let's look at an energy level spectrum, so some energy that's emitted or absorbed from a system, and try to predict what the electronic structure, what the spacings are in that actual system of matter. So the reverse of what we did last time. So to which energy level scheme, A, B, or C, does this emission spectrum correspond? Think about that for a minute and make a selection. Some possible explanations for each answer. A, when you flip an energy level diagram 90 degrees, that's a good way to arrive at what the spectrum looks like. Or B, two small transitions give the same low energy line, and three unique high energy transitions give the higher lines. Or C, there are three large energy spacings and one small one, and the spectrum has three high and one low energy line. Think about those three possible explanations and make another selection. Let's look at the relationship between emission spectra and energy level spacing in the matter. So if you have a, a energy level spacing that looks like A, what would the emission spectrum look like? Well, you have to look at every possible transition in the system. And here you can see three high energy level transitions. Those would give you high frequency lines. And three low, you could have this tiny transition, this tiny transition, and this tiny transition. These two of equal energy. So they're degenerate. They would fall right on top of each other and give you only one line, even though there's two transitions. But the two transitions have the same energy, so we can't resolve them in terms of energy. So you'd get just two lines, one for this transition and one corresponding to both of these transitions. So that doesn't look like the right answer. If we look at B, we have one, two, three, four transitions, but these middle two are the same energy. They would fall right on top of each other. So you'd have a very high energy level, a medium and a medium at the same energy, and a low in your high band. That's a total of three from these four transitions, since two are exactly the same, and then two tiny low energy transitions, but again, they are of equal energy. So that would give you one line. That looks like the spectrum we've seen. And if you look at C, that of course isn't anything like what we see. You have one large energy transition, and then two energy transitions in the intermediate range, but this one, this pair, and this pair are of equal energy. So they'd give you only one line. So this pair gives you one line, this pair gives you one line, two intermediate lines, and then a small energy transition. So you see how you can analyze a energy level diagram and go to a spectrum and kind of backwards and forwards. That's why a spectrum is valuable. It tells you by inference something about the actual matter. And remember, you can't look at tiny little matter in your microscope. You have to bathe it with this electromagnetic radiation, see what it absorbs and emits, and by thinking about what it absorbs and emits, reconstruct what its energy level diagram might, might be, what its electronic structure might be. So here, the correct answer is B.